Hey, Tzorayim Tov, we continue in the Sefer, Eshpoich Lefanov Sichi. We begin Perak Chavay, chapter 25, which is very important because it defines certain terms that we've been using and not really explaining them yet because we can't explain the whole term every time we mention it. So now we're going to, uh, to go into detail and to explain this term, these two terms. And now, you know, when we go back and, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe we worth the hazard certain points of this safer, because we've got to go back and understand what certain things are being said. And part of, part of his Spodidus has the following, and this is the name of chapter 25, which is on page Reish Samachtes, Ta'anos Ba'amatlaot. Simple translation, tanot means claims, like you make a claim against somebody, and amatla is an excuse. And we kept saying that in his photos, that's an opportunity to express these ideas. And again, we have a quote from the Likute Mara. His photos has a very high virtue. The person established for himself at least an hour or more to seclude himself alone in a room or in a field. And to explain his speech to him and his, and his creator. With claims and excuses. With words of charm and appeasement. To ask and supplicate before Hashem that he should bring him to true service. So we've said this line a few times. And when you read this, it all goes well, except for those two words. But we have to explain. Reishis, number one, Yeshua Fars is a smichus shall stem What is the connection between these two concepts? Of Ta'anos claims. And on the other hand, Vamatlos excuses, shame and said they seem to be different things, totally different. You make a claim against somebody, that means you got a reason for it. You know, you feel justified that in a positive way. I want this because of the following reason. An excuse means, well, don't blame me, it's not my fault. So where do the two even come together? And that's what he's going to explain. A tana, a claim, is something you're seeking. Why should you do this to me? How come I didn't get the chance to uh, speak to someone? I mean, you have a complaint. That's what a claim is. It's a complaint. How come I don't have this? Another matlaos. Amatlos he may spare those explanations. Biurim o pirushim ladaver shadam oser shall do it. Person defends something he didn't do was not right. Or shlo us as mashlulav he didn't do what he's supposed to do. These are exact opposites. You make a claim when you think you're right and you deserve it. You make an excuse when you do something wrong. You're trying to excuse the behavior. So how are we clumping them together? That's number one. But the more important question is, we have to really understand much more. Does the person have the right to make a claim against Hashem? Let's say a person that had a lot of marriage and learned a lot of Torah and did a lot of mitzvahs. good deeds. Even a person served him with all his might. The near alone appears to him. Shemagil Oskar deserves a reward. What did the Rebbe already tell us? In another place. All the good deeds we do, all the prayers. They're all from Hashem. The way we're able to do it is because Hashem had us do it. We should never think that we deserve to get a reward for anything. And he says in the Sikha Sarat, who can serve Hashem based on the greatness of Hashem? In other words, no matter what you do, what can that compare to the greatness of Hashem? It means you, have, you should be serving Hashem a million times better. So what, 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 what can you say? Oh, look, look what I did for you, Hashem. He continues. 
הרי כל מה שעושה אימנו השם יספרח, הוא מוכן לזכור השם אסתוק. Whatever Hashem does for us is not because we deserve it, it's as the Pesach says, Hashem with you is charity. All the things Hashem does for us is charity. And it's not like we have a right, but rather it is a kindness. And you don't have to go to Hasidus, the Shulchan Aruch. The Bet Yosef, the Bet Yosef says in Simen Tzadich, as up, I turned blue. <laughs> I can change it. I turn this blue and that makes this white. He, oh, where did that come from? Where did that come from? So the Shulchan Aruch says in Simen Tzadich Hesh, Al Yachshov, Roy Hu Shiyasa Kodesh Baruch Hu Bakosh Hu Sikivin Shikivan Tivi Tzvilos. Person should not think that Hashem should do what I ask because I had Kavon in my davening today. <laughs> no way. When you think that way, that just reminds Hashem of your sins. Oh, you think you deserve something. Okay, would you like me to check it out? We say, ah, he's pretty sure, he's pretty confident that he deserves the answer. So let's open up the books and let's see. But rather, person should think differently. Please, I don't deserve anything, but do me a favor, please. Oh, that's different. If you're unbelievable, say in your house, who am I, this impoverished, disgusting person, that I'm coming to ask something from Hashem? Except the only reason I can, only because of the great kindness. That Hashem conducts himself with his creatures. And that's what we said from the Rajba a couple of months ago on an Arab Shabbos class. That's the command of the first bracha of Magain Avraham. That what do we say? That Hashem gives us kindness. That's our covenant for the first bracha. <laughs> Hashem gives us kindness even though we don't deserve it. And that's the covenant we have to have. So therefore, we come back to our original question. In the world, can you think that you can have claims against Hashem? Now, what he's going to do now for quite a while is just expand the question. He's going to keep expanding the question, making the question harder and harder, like more difficult. Well, we started by saying we should do this kind of Rabbi Nachman says that part of his photodus is making claims. And also excuses. So the first question we ask, the two don't seem to go together hand in hand. Why are you clumping them? Oh, always, always clumped together, the same phrase. And number two, the more important question is, how in the world can you make a claim against Hashem? Now, more examples of this. We got Moshe Rabbeinu Isha Lokim, even the man of God, Moshe himself. He never asked for something because of a claim. And not even for his merits. The only thing was, only from using the kindness of Hashem and the attribute of showing charm, which means, what does chanun mean? He gives gifts for free, undeserved gifts. And that's what this parsha in second parsha in Forum. And I pleaded before Hashem, I supplicated for Hashem. Veschanan comes from the root chain. It's a free gift. And from here, the Sifri learns, from here, these words of Moshe, nobody has any claims to Hashem. Now, now, we, now there's all kinds of claims. So let's look at every type of claim. There's one claim. How come you're not giving me this? No, nope, that's out. There's one claim about that. But how about other claims? So a lot of things we can complain about. You know, there's no shortage. I'm sure we come up with really good lists. How about this claim? What if the guy is making a claim, Hashem, why am I suffering so much? That's a different claim now. It's not like, how come you're not giving me a reward? How come I'm suffering? Well, Rabbi, can I ask you a good question? Or you Go want ahead. to keep going? Don't, Go don't, don't, don't we also learn that uh, we're supposed to believe there's reward for the mitzvahs we do? I know this the whole thing reward, about it. There's a reward as a free gift that's undeserved. Uh-huh. 
So we shouldn't ask for it, but we should expect Don't it. ask for it. If you get it, you say, oh, thanks. I appreciate you giving me this. I don't deserve it. Yeah, you have to believe Hashem rewards us undeservedly. Because after all, what did you really do and what did Hashem really do? And so now let's say the second. Okay, thank okay? you. You're suffering. That could be a claim. I said, why are you hurting me? Okay, that could seem reasonable. No. Because we have a rule. Whatever Hashem does is for the good. <laughs> so that's out. Now, wait a minute. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. But the Rambam says part of prayer is to ask for mercy and pray for your needs. Yes, that is a mitzvah. But where's the place for claims? Hashem, please give me mercy. I need this, but I'm not claiming it. I'm not saying I deserve it. Does a person even know Hashem's ways? Does a person have any concept of God's divine supervision? That he has claims, God forbid. Can a person beat Hashem with his claims? Oh, I got a claim that God can't answer. He's going to have to give in to this. And more than that, it's a prohibition to um, have second thoughts about it, to second guess Hashem. Because Gemara Bracha says, you're not allowed to suspect that God does an incorrect judgment. Because Hashem, I'm upset at you. Why did you do this? I didn't deserve it. You're not allowed to do that. You make it seem like God is a, a liberal judge in Alberta. Tell guys no freedom of speech. You know, civil another thing. Sakonius, it's dangerous to have such a mentality. Because the Gemara brings Levi Hetiach Dvarim Klape Malavi Tala. Levi um, threw words up against Hashem, as it were. He was uh, angry at Hashem and he got himself in trouble. Bahare. Okay, so this is really. I mean, like he's, he's just bent. He's just, yeah, he got hung. Bahare im Nusach at Filhu Al Hashem, Lo El Hashem. If the type of prayer is on Hashem, but not to Hashem. Against Hashem. Okay. That's considered criticizing as we see with the prayer of Tzvilas Khan. So we can't do that. Hashem doesn't like it. Even though a person will find himself in a very, uh, <coughs> very suffering situation. And the suffering is bringing out the claims and criticisms. Okay. Okay, so you could say, but we can't come back and say, a person's never um, blamed for what he does in his pain. Right? I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, you know, but but still, you know, we don't we don't criticize him for it, you know, we don't punish him for it. But still, it's not something you should do. For example. The Medrash. When Rachel asked Yaakov, give me children, what was Yaakov's answer? Am I in Hashem's place? Bizraim already criticized her for her words. And what Hashem answer? Is this how you talk to people who are sad? England, a level of test when a person is suffering, we don't say criticisms against it. So, wait a minute. So, it seems to be a little bit of a question. Wait a minute. We just said that a person is not held accountable for what he says when he's suffering. So, what? So, maybe I could have some complaints. So, how do we kind of balance these two ideas? Not really supposed to complain against Hashem when you're suffering because Hashem knows what he's doing. And it's really a bad thing. But then again, we said a person is not held accountable for what he says out of pain. We talk on Shagam, Shazet Gamma Bear, Ladivas Orchestra. This could be what the Zara Kodesh means in Parshas Bolok. Shashem is Rak Shomeas, Philos of Anish, Miskotimo Hashem listens to the prayer of the impoverished one when he contends with it. So what's going on? Ubemis, the truth is, 
Before a person sits to pour his heart before Hashem, especially when a person, God forbid, is in a situation of pain. You got to ask that, that you don't say things that are not fitting. Sometimes people who are in suffering, they're not able to control their spirit that's so angry. As having the Gemara and Brachas. You should always say a few words before Hashem. He brings a pasuk in Kohelis. Don't be confounded with your mouth and heart. Don't be so quick to say things before Hashem. Why? Because Hashem's in the heavens. And you're on the earth. Your word should be few. What does that mean? The pasuk means. When Hashem is dealing with the attribute of just with Elohim, don't say where's the Elohim. So tomorrow, don't be so quick to speak. Don't let your heart rise to say hard words. To complain against Hashem. And now to say, believe Chaltarachemis. Even your heart, you shouldn't question. Why can't Elohim by Shemayim tell us Hashem's in heaven and earth? There's no way you can understand what God's plans were. That's what it says in Yeshaya. It's just like the heavens is way above the earth. So are my ways way higher than your ways. So my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Therefore, the Gemara says, and the Apostle says, your words should be few. When you go to pour your hearts before your stomach, say less words, less is more. Because less you sin with harsh words or complaints against Hashem. So we're being told, don't talk so much. And this, before the Gemara makes this statement about say few words, the Gemara brings a story with Rabbi Akiva. And you know the famous story there. You would have to go over the story. We've said it a million times. Not a million. He went to lodge in the city. They wouldn't give him lodging. And he kept saying, called over to the top of it. And of course, we know the donkey got killed. The rooster got killed. The candle went out. And we know all those things. And he got saved. And that for this statement, we have this story. We have this story. And it was lots he could have criticized. He kept his much. It's all good. And then he found out, you know, if it would have been the other thing, it would have been bad. So now the Marsha, we'll skip these few lines because I'm just saying it outside. So the Marsha wants to connect the story to the statement. So Marsha is, what's the smichos hamaish or Rabbi Akiva? What's the case in Rabbi Akiva's story? And Rabbi is saying your word should be few. And the connection to the later Gemara that says, She shall call me service to seek, you should accept suffering in silence. Vakesh Rahm asked for mercy. What do you see? What do you think Rameir means when he says your word should be few? She told a lot of meters for us if a measure of retribution comes to a person. Don't say a lot. Don't second guess Hashem. Even though Shemi Snagel Bavinia Sadin is dealing with the attribute of justice, which is called a Lokim, Kilkim Ashwine, because Hashem's in the heavens and you're below. Bavshir Shosa Zos Latova, and it's possible he's only doing it for your good. You don't see the whole picture. That's right. So now, call Omer, everything we're saying is included what Rabbi Nachman said in the second of his teachings. So you shouldn't lean your prayer to the right or to the left. What's included in that? Don't pray in a way of judgment, which is which are criticism of Hashem. Only great, great tzaddikim can do it. So only at certain times, and we have no idea what they were doing. So with all this embellishment, he's coming to the same conclusion. You have to know we have no right to complain. 
But the words that we seem to find, and Don Melch uses, seems to be complaints. But when he did, he wasn't like a person going with complaints and criticisms. Rather, El Belev Nishbar Baruach Mocha, but he's coming from a broken heart and a lowly spirit. And even expressions that seem to be claims. And so it's It's a prayer from an attribute of judgment. That statement will sometimes use. We have to be careful not to do that. As the Rebbe said, we only pray for mercy and supplications. So therefore, we're coming to the end of the long uh, question. And therefore, even when we're screaming out from the depths of our and saying, Suk him up to Ilim. Don't, even though David may have used them as it appears to be criticisms, claims, you have to use it as mercy and supplication requests. And when you're crying, when you're crying, it shouldn't be the type of crier that's cry that's associated with a, a, a complaint. When David says, what will it gain if my blood goes to the bottom? He wasn't criticizing Hashem, but he's crying and praying to Hashem with tears of surrendering and negation. So we come back to our question. What is the concept of criticizing Hashem? That's the question. Okay. So now, what does a good Jew do? You answer one question by asking another question. So the Gemara Baba Metziah tells us a very interesting story. This is the famous story of Rabbi Eliezer and the rabbis when he said that the Tanur of Achnai was far. And everybody said it was Tame. And there's a whole argument going on back and forth. The whole thing. Loba, Shemayi, ba, ba, ba. The end of the story, the Gemara says, and what was Hashem doing the whole time this raging battle was going on? Hashem's happy when he is defeated. He says, defeat me, my son, defeat me. Let's see what this means. Rabbi Nachman says in the 97th Torah, what's the will of Hashem? What's the pleasure that God, so to speak, gets from this world? He saw down the line, Shoot Sadiqim, there will be righteous people, that because of their good actions, they will be dominant with their prayers. And they'll be able to activate what they want. Like we have the rule. Sadik Moishel Yerasapim. rules over fear of Hashem. We'll explain this. It was filled on example of Hashem created the world for that pleasure. Hashem created the world for the pleasure that the tzaddik defeats him in wanting good for the Jewish people. And that's what Mar says in Psachim. Zamru Lami, sing to the one, Hashem, Shemanaskin so that we defeat him, and he's happy. And then Rabbi Nachman says, he came to the devil of that Kurdish park on fire. See, husband, it's because it's one person speaks for Hashem and explains his speech and his criticisms and his requests. Rotsal and that say, as a Kurdish park, he wants to defeat Hashem, as it were. I shem is right. So, times that Hashem has a lot of pleasure for us. So, the obvious question on top of the first question is, they shall have to establish the Indian rule in that say for Hashem. Is there a concept to defeat Hashem? Competition? Being a winner? Is this what Hashem wants from us? That we fight Hashem and we want to win against Hashem? Is this what Hashem wants? So it seems the reason is, guess what? What's the reason the guy created the whole world? Is to reveal his kingdom and his dominion. That's the point. Why? So when is that ultimate revelation happens? 
That there are people who coronate Hashem with the ultimate of perfection. Actually, Yisbarach no sin as a vluchiram till Hashem gives them power of the realm. To reveal that there's a very powerful God who listens to what his servants ask for. Shall they feel awesome through their prayers? God, they're able to change nature. What is he saying over here? If you have a very powerful king, what does a very powerful king do or have? I think he does all the work by himself. Powerful king delegates, but he delegates only to competent people. What's the world about? To reveal there's a God in this world. Well, if there's a God in this world, we have to understand it from our perspective. Now, let's say, for example, as, as uh, incompetent Biden is, he delegates a lot. And those people got a lot of power. He's the most incompetent person that ever was in the Oval Office. With maybe the exception of FDR in his fourth term. But he's got power because he delegates it all. And believe me, you can't touch this guy. So, Lahavda, Lahavda, a million have dollars. We want to bring out there's a God in this world. Of course, there's a God in this world. People get close to God, God gives them the power to do what God wants. That's how powerful he is. He gives that power to others and he doesn't have to do the whole thing by himself. If you got to do everything by yourself, you're not that powerful. You can be a ruler, but not a king. You can be a Moshe, but not a Melech. So Hashem is so powerful that he has people who he can give the power to. And he's very happy with them. Because, but their power comes from Hashem's power. That's the important point. Hashem's not afraid to give him the power. Many places, a king won't give anybody much power. You know why? Because they're afraid someone's going to hurt him with the power. But a real powerful king says, if you're really powerful, what do I care if I give these guys some power? Huh. You think they're going to be able to overthrow me? A joke. As soon as they want to try to overthrow me, like Darth Vader, I choke him to death. Okay, I'm not afraid to give... The, the, the sign of great power means you're not afraid to delegate power. It's worth being a tzaddik. So now the tzaddik, when he comes with any complaints, he's just using the power that Hashem is giving him. But this still begs the question. We're still very far away from the end of the answer. As we come to the top of page, Reish Ayan Dalit. We still have to come to understand the words of the Rebbe when he says that claims is part of his purpose. How is it possible for us to understand the way Hashem conducts the world that we can criticize it? I mean, you're telling me Hashem gives us power, but how, how do we even know how to use it? I'm saying, Sadiq says, Hashem, no, don't kill this person. Well, Hashem says to the what do you know? Do you know why I'm doing it? So it still doesn't make a lot of sense. So we gave Levar calls out, she said, Hak him at the close. Now, but to understand, so we have to give an overall introduction. And uh, we're really not having enough time to get into that. So we're going to have to stop it right over here by the Hakdama Clolis. And uh, sorry that I'm leaving you on the ledge, so to speak, on the lurch. But that'll just cause us to be excited for tomorrow's class. Okie dokie. There's probably a reason for this as well. That's right. We have right. to think about it for a day. Like the Rambam, we're doing it at night. We're just hanging on a cliff till we get to the answer. Okay.